and welcome to Landscape Photography World, the podcast for everyone passionate about landscape photography. I'm Grant Swinburne and I'll be your host on this show, talking to landscape photographers about their motivations, likes and dislikes. Vaughan Laws, a Melbourne-based landscape and weather photographer, discusses his photography journey from capturing family moments with his first DSLR in 2013 to delving into light painting and macro photography. Transformed by summer storms over Port Phillip Bay, Vaughan's focus shifted to landscape and weather photography. Embracing drone technology, he explores unique perspectives from the sky, always aiming for improvement and innovation. Vaughan's work, featured in prominent media outlets and social media, recently gained international recognition with licensing by Fox News Weather. Vaughan shares his insights into his evolving approach his passion for weather photography and concerns about AI's impact on the art. He emphasises the community building aspect of running Melbourne storm chases with his friend Nick and discusses the challenges of balancing photography costs with daily life. I hope you enjoy the show. G'day Vaughan, welcome to Landscape Photography World. How are you going? I'm going not too bad, thanks. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. Why don't we start with where who you are and why you're into landscape photography yep so i'm my name's vaughan i'm based in melbourne i started off uh, around 20 2011 doing mm-hmm. photography and that was mainly just with taking photos of my kids and then it turned into a bit more of a yeah a passion for me okay cool so One of the things I'm really interested in is when photography starts to shift from recording, and for some people, journalistic photography, it's still recording, but when it started to turn into an art form for you, when did that sort of start to make you go, oh, this is not just a photo? Yeah, that probably would have maybe around like the 2014, 15 mark. Like I said, I mainly bought a camera. I wasn't intentionally buying it to do photography and I basically didn't use it for a little bit and then I decided to grab it out and I started watching videos getting into light painting macro photography and then I started my mind started to come up with those compositions and all those different things and then yeah started exploring it yeah cool Cool. so what is it that motivates you creatively what is it that you you're looking for in a shot you do quite a lot of storm chasing you do a bit of long exposure work um, yep. looking through your portfolio it's it is quite varied there's architecture there's uh macro as you said there's a whole range of things what is it that gets you going uh, yeah definitely the weather side of photography is my main passion anything from storms severe weather to even just sunrise and sunsets anything to do with that is my main passion i don't i don't do so much anything with macro or anything anymore that was my the thing that kicked it off but yeah anything to do with weather is definitely what gives me a kick and getting out out anywhere northern victoria all that sort of stuff yeah cool what what's your approach in terms of planning are you a planner or are you more spontaneous with your photography look sometimes I plan, especially with when it comes to storm season, you've got to always looking at models and things like that. But yeah, it really depends. So for that sort of stuff, I'm definitely looking ahead and planning, obviously trying to get things in place with with my kids, getting them looked after so I can go out. But then on the other hand, I, I just go out and sometimes just spontaneously go somewhere and go shoot and hope there's a good sunrise or sunset. Yeah. In terms of you shoot in and your style do you have a specific feeling or style that you're trying to aim for uh, i don't we don't have a, a certain style i guess everyone's got their own sort of ways they like the shooter scene mine's definitely i think mine's definitely adjusted over time you always change the way you try and frame up images or just even looking around wherever you are, trying to find something new. But, yeah, I don't have a, a certain style, I'd say. Yeah, okay. Is there, are there any particular photographers that you'd say have influenced how you shoot? There's lots. I say 
it's not necessarily probably a handful of photographers. I just, I always look at everyone's work and you always strive to better yourself. You always want to be as good as you can be. Yeah, yeah. How did you, you you mentioned you started watching videos. Are you completely self-taught through videos or have you gone through any formal? No, I haven't done done anything formal. So, yeah, I was all self-taught. I learnt just through videos, learning the settings, doing that sort of stuff, all the exposures, and it was just basically learning trial and error. Yeah, okay. I'd go out, yeah, and it was just... You, you just end up learning your settings and learning what works and then it just becomes a second nature. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about in terms of how you look at photography in society? What is photography to you and what do you, where do you see its place in society? Photography to me, it's my passion and it's my hobby. I do it because basically I love getting out, going into nature, It's my sort of meditation, my escape. Or I think, not really sure how it it fits in society. It's it's a bit of a bit of a difficult question. Asked it. (laughs) I know. It's. I think it's. I think it's going to be interesting how it goes with everything that's coming up with AI, and Mm. I I think that's one of the the parts that worries me a little bit uh, because I love photography. I love. To me, it's going out and actually capturing it, not so much editing it behind the computer, which I find that's going to be the biggest challenge for photography coming up where there's so many made-up scenes and it defeats the purpose of what photography is, in my my personal opinion anyway. Yeah, interesting. I, I personally think in terms of landscape photography, I don't know if it'll make it more valuable, but I think people, in terms of monetary value, but in terms of that social value, I think people will value the work that is clearly being done by somebody that's gone out somewhere and taken the shot as opposed to somebody that sat at a keyboard and typed a few words and generated it. Because to me, the, the, the biggest question will be how you can actually discern and there's already problems with uh, people seeing things that are very realistic that are computer generated and that ability to discern what's been generated versus what is actually being taken as a photo. I think the ethical side of things where people are honest about what it is that they're doing is going to be the the field that becomes more topical. Yeah, definitely. And you already see that a lot on social media with different things, people putting different photos up. Yeah, I think if you know what you're looking at, you can see what's real and what's not, especially with the sort of the severe weather side of things. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. You've got to do the hard yards to to get the rewards a lot of the time. So Definitely. So I guess what is it that makes you go and do the hard yards? How, how do you decide, okay, Today's a good day to get out there and, and do it, whether it's a, a weather pattern you're seeing coming across the, the countryside or, or something else. Yeah, there's nothing really that pulls me in one direction. It's just, yeah, again, it's just what I want to do. There's no, I think the travel side of things doesn't really bother me as long as I'm going and getting what I want to get, essentially. Yeah, yeah. okay. Or at least trying to do that. Yeah. Um, it's, getting, it's just getting out there. Speaking of travel, what, what's the furthest you've gone to get a shot? I think the, for, for storms, we go Northern Vic a lot of the time into New South Wales. Yeah, it all depends. It depends on what I've got for my availability, the kids being looked after, things like that. That's There's always different life impacts that, that yeah, come sure. away. But, yeah, definitely try and there's times when we're doing... 12, 13 hour days or more just driving and then wow. the next day and then it's just, yeah, it's a lot. Do you shoot alone or do you like shooting with other people? When I go out just doing my own sort of photography things, like not severe weather stuff, I usually just go alone. With storms, I go with my other mate, Nick. Yeah, we, we run the Melbourne Storm Chasers page. Okay, yeah. We go out. 
together and yeah, do a lot of that. Yeah, cool. You mentioned and you mentioned it a couple of times about the dealing with getting kids looked after and so forth. How do you balance? You work full time. Photography is a hobby. How do you balance everything in terms of relationships, work, and your passion? Yeah, it can be hard. It can be hard a lot of the time. My partner is you know, very supportive of photography and me going out and doing what I want to do. I've got grandparents that are always there to help look after the kids as well. So I've got yeah, plenty of support. But yeah, it is it is hard with juggling all of them and even trying to plan. And what's your favourite place to go? Oh, we don't have. There's no f- favourite place to actually just to go out and shoot. Yeah, for weather, it would be the Mallee is definitely one of my favourite spots just because it's so flat and yeah. everything's just so open out there compared to around, obviously around the, the Melbourne area. The only other place that's close by would be Gippsland. There's some flat areas down there, which is good for storm chasing, but mm. yeah, definitely the Mallee. Yeah. For people that are overseas or don't know the, the Mallee area, can you describe it? I, I mean, I know what it's like. It's flat scrubland, that sort of thing. Yeah. But what, yeah. what would somebody expect if they were out there? Oh, it's just basically flat, red dirt roads, very grid-like structure, paddocks with just dead trees. And, yeah, it's probably, I guess it's probably similar to what parts of the alleys like in the States where it's just that sort of nice yep. flat land. Yeah, you get massive scenes coming over in the sky, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. So not many features, but some and enough on, on the land to give you yeah. a and you're, you're ground. Just, yeah, you always have, whether it's dead trees or have old sheds or farmhouses or old windmills or whatever it is there'll be there's always something to get a, a good foreground object in there but yeah most of the time you don't even you're not too worried about that because you're just looking mainly at the sky and what's coming towards you yeah that's what i used to be very concerned about what was in the image and Sometimes I'd end up missing the main point that I was out there for shooting the storms, but yeah, okay. Now, yeah, my focus is on actually capturing what's coming towards me. Yeah, coming. What, what's happening in the sky? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's your most memorable experience out shooting? I don't know. Probably the local. There was one when we had a severe storm coming across Port Phillip Bay. That was probably a good one for me to remember. <laughs> Not so much because I was out anywhere special. I was just down at my local beach in Frankston, but just the just seeing the sheer size of the shelf cloud coming across, flashing away. That was, I think it was more probably more memorable because of everyone that was on the beach pretty well stopped to witness what was coming as well. Normally, when people see a storm coming, they just start packing up and heading off where. This one, everyone was just sitting there actually watching what was happening. So it was very, yeah, a bit of a surreal thing because most people don't really always care about what's happening in the sky. Yeah, yeah. It is interesting when when you see a lot of people stop what they're doing and just look up. Yeah, that's when there's something. So what about horror stories? Have you had any issues while you're out? Not too much. I've had everyone's one where you forget an SD card or something like that. (laughs) Traveller travel a few hours away and you go, I don't have an ST card, but I've been lucky enough to go to a shop or something if there's something nearby or, yeah, nothing too much. I've had flat battery before, but, yeah, apart from that, it's been pretty lucky. Yeah, okay, fair enough. What have you learned about the world through photography? Probably just not always be going 100%. You can always just slow down a bit and take your time. Photography is probably... Maybe slowed me down a bit when I go out there now. Mm-hmm. Take, take a bit more time and not just be rushed to get the camera out and capture whatever's in front of me. I'm a bit more there looking at what's actually happening. Yeah. Whereas when I started, I was very 
as soon as I'm there, the camera's out and taking photos and, yeah, definitely. Made you appreciate what's in front of you a bit more. Yeah. So what, what's your process now? Are you pull up, take a look around and work out where you're going to go before you get in, into it or are you even more considered than that? Yeah, no, I'd, I'd walk around, have a look, yeah, actually just see what's around and go work out a composition. Yeah, I'm not always just getting the camera out straight away. Yeah. Unless I have to, unless there's bolts crashing down or something, then I'll be rushing to get the camera out. But if it's anything else, just with normal photography, I'll just be, yeah, taking my time and walking around, having a look. Yeah, fair enough. In terms of your processing, are you straight into it when you get back from the shoot or do you let it marinate for a bit and get into it later? A lot of the time when I do tend to upload them pretty quickly. I, I I do that part of photography as well, like doing the post-processing part of it. I like to be able to see what, what I've actually captured and what I've created and I, I do love sharing sharing the photos yeah. I mean, people love seeing things that are happening around like everyone loves seeing if they've seen a storm come over their house they always want to have a look and see what people captured I do I always love seeing what other photographers get as well yeah yeah okay so what kind of time do you spend on an edit is it something that's just quick few tweaks here and there and post yeah, it up but- or are you more detailed yeah i don't go too too detailed into it on says that i'm um i'm not i don't have 30 different layers open in photoshop i I don't go to that extent yeah i'm pretty pretty straightforward i'll do what i want in lightroom then i'll do my final touch-ups in in photoshop and that's about it really i don't yeah i'm not one to spend hours on on a single photo or anything like that. I'm struggling with one that I've been editing now for about three hours and I'm still not happy with it. <laughs> yeah. You do get those ones. There's ones where you, you try and want it to be the way you want it to be. Yeah. 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 I know it's a good image and I know it's good, but it's just I'm just trying to get it right. Yeah. yeah. Certain things aren't quite how I'd like them, tone or colour-wise. So yeah. It's, just about trying to drive the the right tweaks. Yeah, and I've I mean, gone through and edited it about three times now. <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong, I do that as well. Like I, I don't always just get in there and edit it, and that's it. Sometimes I'll get home, I'll edit it, and I'll be like, "Yeah, this isn't, <laughs> isn't what I want it to look like." So then I'll yeah, what, what was I thinking? Close the laptop, <laughs> and I'll come back the next day. But yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I think we all have those at those times. Yeah. What about when you've got those times where you hit a creative wall? You look, you're looking at an image, going, "Yeah, it's just not feeling it." Or you, you hear, "Oh, it could be some severe weather, but no, nah, I couldn't be bothered. I'm not going out." But yeah. Do you ever ha- do you ever have that situation? Yeah, I've had a couple of times. I think <laughs> that I think a lot of people probably had it over COVID as well. But even coming out of that, I, there was yeah months where I wouldn't go out and shoot. I just yeah didn't have the felt like I just didn't have the passion to go out and do it. It was just lacking, but it always seems to come back. So I don't know if it's just things that are happening in life as well that sort yeah, of yeah. affect that. But yeah, I've always had it come back. So you're not doing anything special to force it or anything. No, I just it just I think I think it just eventually eats away at me, and it just wants. I just want to go out of it. The itch needs to be scratched. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So it just ends up coming back and I end up going out and then it just builds from there. Fair enough. Talk to me a bit about the Storm Chasers page. How did you get started on that? Yeah. So Nick is Nick McCartney. He runs it. Um, yeah. We, he probably contacted me back in 2016. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then we just met up, went out, basically just, yeah, came good mates, go for the same footy team, love storms. We work at the same workplace now. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, just go from there and, yeah, we we just both have that passion for, for storms. 
which mm-hmm. really, uh, I guess, really bonds what we do. Yeah. yeah. Especially with the page. The page itself, there's lots of different weather pages out there. We try and strive to be actually out out there chasing storms and trying to go live so people can see what we're seeing and and yeah. Cool. How how big's the community that uses the page? Oh, there's over a hundred thousand now on that. Okay. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Yeah. So in terms of people using it, are they is it just stuff that they can consume or is there a forum or anything that they can use to talk to one another? Is it a community based thing or is it more just you guys, you and Nick sharing stuff? Looks mainly Nick and I are doing those sort of things like there'll be thunderstorm forecasts that we put up. We'll do updates on different systems. We do have a, a group as well where people can put their images or videos in mm-hmm. cool. um, and we can share them to the main page. Um, yeah. How, how do people find I think people really enjoy what we do and they always seem to be appreciative of what we do as well. Always appreciative of the information provided, the heads up, yeah, and able to see what we do. What do you think is the biggest challenge facing photographers right now? You talked about AI, but I think there's a few other challenges out there. I'm just interested to see what you think is boiling up that people need to pay attention to. I'm not really sure. I think AI was my main sort of thought to that. What are the things that you think of? I think just the volume of photography that's out there is one of the biggest challenges. The other one, and and it's in particular for landscape photographers and and nature photographers, is just uh, climate change. I think they're they're probably two of the two of the biggest challenges um, for me. Climate change is just you know going to become a a bigger and bigger issue. I think photographers can play a part in helping document some of that but there's not much point in documenting it if we if we all cark it yeah but yeah there are i do what i do know what you mean with those both those ones especially the the amount of people doing photography these days yeah i i think the the, the challenge there is it, it it is devaluing for photographers that are trying to make a living at it it's cer- certainly devalued photography in a lot of ways there's a lot of photography out there some of it good some of it rubbish there's there's always going to be a spectrum but I think just the volume of photography that is out there and the amount that gets shared makes it really challenging to get noticed yeah it definitely does everyone's got a camera in their pocket now so Mm -hmm. it's yeah gets hard and Mm -hmm. I've definitely noticed that with even just weather events you can everyone's got a phone They'll record it, try and take photos. Yep. Most phones are almost as good as some DSLRs now, so it's <laughs> it is hard. Yeah, I think I, I still think phones are uh, a few years behind the sort of mainstream large larger format camera bodies, and that's just a by dint of the sensors. But I think the software and so forth that's being used some of it ai some of it not the software that's being used on those now just makes it so much easier to take really amazing shots with iphones if you know what you're doing with it yeah sometimes you don't even know need to know what you're doing you can just no that's true yeah you press can... the button and it and it'll <laughs> shoot out a good photo so <laughs> yeah that's it where do you see the future of photography going well, i think ai is going to take a big sort of part in photography I, I hope it doesn't you know take away too much from people's efforts of actually going out and taking photos that's just one of my main main concerns yeah, yeah. what's your favorite thing about being a photographer I would think I think my, my favorite thing is just actually going out and seeing all the different places that you get yeah. to that's yeah that's definitely my favorite part of it I think all the different places that you probably just wouldn't go to if I wasn't going there for a purpose to take photos. Yeah. yeah. Be going out to all these places. What's your least favourite thing? Uh, probably the the cost behind it. Yeah. <laughs> the cost of just 
comes down to everything. The, yeah, it's an expensive like, addiction, isn't it? Yeah, driving to places, the cost of cameras and accessories and whatever else comes along with it, computers, soft like it's just a it's a never ending thing, and it always feels like there's something that needs to be updated. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's like a new iPhone every six months. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And what do you like to do when you're not out shooting? I don't know, like I just normally just hang around with, hang out with mates, go out with the kids, just normal life-to-life stuff, all day to, day-to-day things, just, yeah, nothing in particular. Cool. You know, I do, I'm a carpenter by trade, so every now and then I'll be projects around the house to do. But, yeah, I can't really do anything like that at the moment. But Yeah, well, fair enough, fair yeah. enough. Are there any photographers out there you think I should be talking to on the podcast? There's lots out there. No, I don't know. I uh, enjoy following Tom Putt. Yep. I've spoken to him and Kane. He's He lives up in Broome, so he's another. Okay, other, yeah. Another storm chaser, and he, he gets a lot of good stuff up in the wet season. Yeah, uh, I can imagine the the storm season up there gets gets pretty spectacular. Yeah, yeah. I think they've been a bit quiet this year. and They, they probably wouldn't be very happy with that. I think Melbourne's yeah. had more storms than them, but... Uh, oh, it's all over in Queensland, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's it. The East is copping it all. But, yeah, him and Ben Brody, he's, yeah, he's got some ripper work as well. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Well, i got one more question for you, and that's probably the most important one people like to hear the answer to. Do you like pineapple on pizza? I do. <laughs> I don't mind it. <laughs> Uh, funny thing, going back to that other question, that is another one of my passions that I do is making pizzas. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I make make good good homemade pizza, so got, nice. the, yeah. got the pizza oven and the setup. So, is yeah. it uh, wood wood fired or an electric? Uh it's wood and gas. So I can do either. Okay, nice. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, a big brick one, is it, or a? No, it's not a massive one yet. It's a single one, but I, I, I made myself a. Pizza station with all the shells for all the things. Nice. <laughs> Usually have pizza parties and things, but yeah, I think pineapple on pizza is good. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Don't say that to any Italian people because no, I'll, I know, I know. Yeah. I've I've had a few uh, Italian guys on the on the show, and yeah, none none of them are about it. So. <laughs> no, nah, my partner's dad's Italian, and uh, no, fair enough. Yeah. All right, it's wonderful uh, catching up with you, Vaughn. Where can people find your work? They find me on. Facebook and Instagram, just Vaughan Laws Photography. Yep. And same with my website, VaughanLawsPhotography.com. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Matt. No worries. Thanks, Grant. Thanks for listening to Landscape Photography World. I hope you enjoyed the show and keep listening because I'll be joined by some great guests in upcoming episodes. You can find my work in this podcast at GrantSwinburnPhotography.com. I'm also on Vero, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Grant Swinburne. Hope to see you out shooting soon.